What's going on, everyone? Dick is here. Bringing you another exciting, phenomenal, entertaining, top level, upper echelon fog battle between two great players. On one hand, over here, we got Mr. Talos. Not to lose, Talos. Apparently, the account, just T A L O S, was already taken, so he had to opt for the E, plopped it on there. Still goes by Talos, not to lose. Excuse me. You probably recognize him from the Mangs and Eyes Grandmaster Tournament, where he he advanced past the first round, got to the second round, had a really crazy game versus Sif. Top 10, probably top 5 standard player, phenomenal player. Not as strong in Fog, but still knows the fundamentals, watches his DJs reaching whatever MMR videos, no, I'm just joking. Uh, but it's a strong player overall. On the other hand, over here, we have Average Joe. I have never heard of this player before. Uh, I think they're a Smurf account, or just a new player that knows what they're doing, because I think their record was like 20 and 2 or something, 22 and 2, something good like that. So you know they're a strong player. Anyway, so we got two strong opponents, now let's look at that map. So this map right here is called Struggle Grinding, and for once, I actually like the name of the map. Because like, some of these maps names, they don't make any sense, like, Watermelon Elephant Hose or something like that. I don't want that stupid thing. Like. Struggle grinding, I can more relate to, and especially I can relate because I played on this map and I was definitely struggling here. The thing about this map, when I played on it, I was fighting this guy, I was Jake, he was Cole, and it went on for like 25 turns and I was winning engagements, winning engagements, but like, I wasn't winning the game, like, it was like I had the upper hand in terms of property, in terms of units, I was like, why aren't I winning? So eventually I won, I was like, that should have gone better, I need to figure out why. So I ventured over to my, uh, my sensei, or whatever, guy's hut, Mr. Go7. I went to Go7's hut, and I was like, Mr. Go7, please grace me with your knowledge on how to play better on this map. For, other, for those of you who don't play Advanced Wars by Web, who generally live under a rock, Go7 is one of the best, probably, no, the best Fog player ever to play Advanced Wars by Web, maybe Advanced Wars in general. You need to watch out for this guy. Anyway, he graced me with his wisdom, and he's like, Yes, young man, Mr. Deegis. I'm not going to continue with that voice. He said to go down here and fight on the sides, one at a time. He said, if you're fighting in the center over here, it's very easy to overextend. I was fighting a lot of battles over here, and my opponent was able to easily reinforce the battle. It would take me three turns to get over. It would take my opponent two turns to get over and fight. Even though I was winning, even though I had the income advantage, I just couldn't push far enough, and I just kept going into the meat grinder. Eventually, I somehow won. But thing is, you can't overextend. It's super easy here. It doesn't seem like you're overextending, but once you like get to this road in the city, you are overextended. So Go said, all right, you need to go down here and capture these properties because it's very hard for your opponent to actually reinforce from their far base, basically relying on one base to reinforce over here rather than two in the center. Same goes when you go up here. This upper base will be able to reinforce after a few turns, but this bottom base is completely cut off. So what you want to do, he said, is go down one at a time, not simultaneously. We're not doing pincer strikes. He said, go down, capture these three properties, then go up, then go capture these three properties. And while you're capturing the other properties, put an artillery or two here, put some infantry as a skeleton crew. And that's how you win. You don't want to go straight into the meat grinder in the middle. People are like, death ball, death ball, yeah, bunch all your shit together, woo, yeah. Like, no, you don't do that. That's, that doesn't work all the time. I know it's simple and it's a caveman thing to do, it just seems natural, but what you want to do is more methodical. You want to go for the le lesser defended properties on the side where they're harder to reinforce. So that was the key thing about this map. Another thing, artillery are pretty decent here because there is mountains and there's forests. See these spots right here? Artillery are great here. So even if you were thinking about overextending, good luck trying to dislodge an artillery or even a rockets over here, it's defending this whole vicinity over here. Uh, so that's another reason why you do not want to overextend because there's some nice artillery camp spots over here in the, in the case that you do overextend by accident. Uh, also, these mountains over here, you can also plop something there as well. So those are the main things about this map. You want to be aware of over, overextension. You want to go one side at a time and, you know, go all in. We do strong side, weak side here, but we can flip it after. We can go strong side, weak side. Then once we capture our strong side, then we flip to the weak side. That's just higher level what you tend to do on this sort of map. You don't want to go straight for the center. Anyway, that's enough about this map. Now let's look at the CEOs. So if you guys have watched my videos before, you know I'm not a Rachel tolerator, I'm a straight up hater. Like Rachel, 
especially in fog. Oh my goodness. Like, I just don't like her. Like, the opponent could be an Andy, make like an infantry ball or something, and then she uses her superpower, and then he just heals it off with a hyper upgrade, repair, whatever, the next turn, and the whole attack, the superpower is useless. Like, she's good in some maps in standard. I agree with that. I've seen her used, you know, fantastically in standard, but in fog, I don't think I've ever used her a single time in fog, Rachel. I just always find a better CO, typically Andy, maybe Drake. But on this map, Drake sucks. Lash is typically bad in general. Um, Cole is great in tier 4. My opponent had a... There's so many roads here, so that's why my opponent kind of stuck around for longer. I mean, Jake's good too because of the artillery. But anyway, back to tier 3. Drake's bad, Lash is bad. Kindle's pretty decent here. I, I kind of like Kindle with the center properties over here. That I mean, Kindle can get a nice early advantage. But Rachel's way down there on the list for me. So I was a little shocked to see dual Rachel's higher level play. I was like... I don't quite understand, but I'm intrigued. So that's part of the reason why I checked out this replay. But I'm an, I think this is more of an Andy map. I mean, I just like Andy. I'm pretty biased. But I, even like bunching up your units, there's not, it's not really a bunching kind of map. So, it, you know, it, it piques my curiosity. But let's see how they both play as Rachel. Let's see how they utilize her in order to win. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into that game! So the game starts off with the typical infantry builds. I even skipped past the turn one for purple over there. And you know, Mr. Toulouse, he lo- Talos. I'm gonna call him Toulouse. You know, screw it. Loves his Eiffel Tower. Always goes for the Purpies. As they're known, colloquially. Uh, typical development, you know, going for the chains. Uh, next up, you probably want to go up here, get this capture chain going. Up here, then down here, then also the comm tower. Nice one, two, three punch. Also, this over here is a beautiful chain. Takes a little longer to get there. I've seen some people go a little farther ahead and skip the uh, early ones. Maybe this next infantry skips that one and then goes over here and then starts the infantry chain over here. Let's see what they do. They might be differing in that. But there's a lot of beautiful chains on this map. This isn't a... And then in the middle, there's a bunch of chains as well. This isn't an infantry struggling map. Infantries are going to have a field day on this map. It's very efficient. If you're like have OCD or something and you like infantry capping, uh, this is the map for you. Talus goes for an early artillery. Already I'm like, hmm, okay, that's uh, interesting. Uh, you're playing versus a Rachel who doesn't like to bunch up units, but artillery inherently need to be bunched up near other units to protect them. So I thought that was a little curious. Especially with the extra funds could have easily gone for a tank instead. Uh, but I guess Toulouse saw the use of putting it around the mountain here, maybe down there, maybe over here near the bridge. There's some choke points over here as well. So I'm not, I'm not an artillery hater. I'm just, you know, versus Rachel, you know. Average Joe over here is conserving funds, not going for the tank, going for the recon. I, I assume next turn to follow up with the tank. Usually, sometimes when you have the ability to go for a tank, but you don't, it's usually because the map is larger, the tank won't become relevant for a long enough time. So the recon can get somewhere quicker, get more vision, understand what's going on quicker, and then the tank comes after that. So I kind of agree with that. A lot of people are just like, oh, start off with a tank. I mean, sometimes you could afford a tank, but instead you go for a recon first, and then the next turn you go for a tank. Or maybe if you get some intel from your recon, instead of going for that tank, you go for the artillery instead. So recon intel can be invaluable. Especially with all these roads, recon is going to love this map. Recons will be skating around the whole time. So I, I, I like that recon opening, even though it could go for a tank. Artillery is curious, but I think Toulouse, if anyone else can figure out, Toulouse is a, an expert on unit, sp on unit spacing and like cutting off attacks and whatnot, as you'll soon see, maybe, I'm not sure, but from what I've seen in the standard matches, he knows exactly how to cut off opposing units from attacking his units. Very good at unit positioning. So Mr. Average Joe is... Uh, Brings his recon up to the center, opted to use the bottom one to get the recon up here rather than this one we're going a little bit farther for reasons unknown. I don't know, maybe just saw the capture chains were more valuable in the middle than they are on the sides. You know, I understand. Goes for the tank at the bottom again, just pumping out vehicles from the bottom over here. Seems like both of them, oh no, Toulouse actually got a tank in the middle, so we'll see. So let's see what this little artillery does. Plops up near this infantry, it's not relevant yet. I guess in anticipating, ooh, going for this property over here by red, maybe getting a free kill. Artillery plow, <laughs> artillery pow, and then the infantry finishes it off. Also a tank here if you need be. Put the tank here, attack something, another tank can't follow up because this, this artillery is well protected. Look, we got a river here as well. Like I said, artillery pretty decent on this map. 
I didn't just, I don't disagree with building artillery. Maybe a little early. Maybe that's just me. I like to know what's going on with the recons first or a tank. Now building a recon. Can slither around over here, make sure no infantry is capping. That's another thing. It's recons, it's kinda hard to capture these things on the opposing side early because the recons need to slither in and out. Beautiful vision going on over here. No one has any idea what's going on. I've seen people not use recons in the middle and rather use them on the side because you can put an infantry in a mountain over here or over here and it's just as good as a recon in terms of vision. So usually when I play this map, I think I just put my recons up to the top and to the bottom. Uh, I didn't put them in the middle because I had plenty of vision via my infantry using the mountains. Building another uh, recon, I mean, Average Joe loves his recons. I'm not gonna knock that. Uh, bringing the tank down here, has a nice tank chain forming. I also dig that. Let's see what Toulouse responds with. Yep, goes for the easy kill right there. How did... Okay, there must be something up with the vision. Because I don't know how uh, Toulouse got vision of that. that. That infantry must have already moved. So some sort of glitch is going on. Always a fun time. So let's see what Mr. Joe has to show. Seems to be typical infantry progression in terms of capturing. Uh, a little bit behind in the center capturing due to this artillery over there, so actually not really. I uh, can capture this property over here and as a recon. So we'll see if that center property being slowed down a bit, little bit uh, actually comes into play. It looks like that is, you know, I think that's slightly Toulouse's uh, property over there, so maybe it was a little aggressive to go for that one instead of going for this one down here. Although it's really close to call. Toulouse going for the property. See, I like the recons down here instead of in the middle. Like I said, this mountain over here, you don't really need to have a recon in the middle. This one's just preventing anything, any shenanigans from going on over here. Got some typical infantry moving around. Double tankies. All right. So, yeah, you know, makes sense. Don't really disagree right there. The artillery doing its job right now. First it shot, now it's protecting this infantry over here. So, I guess I was proven wrong. Whatever, Rachel, infantry, whatever. That artillery is actually already doing work. Better work than a tank would. So I take back that Toulouse mows more than me in a lot of instances. I'm not even going to get, pretend anymore. It's infantry over here providing a lot of vision. So I think that uh, Mr. Average Joe wants to prevent that. Little does he know, soon he's going to get blasted by that artillery. Also going double tanks. So we've got some nice tank wars going on. Got an artillery over here from Average Joe as well. So we've got kind of a mirror matchup. Although I guess Average Joe has one more recon than... Uh, Toulouse does. And we got... Okay. For a second I thought the recon attacked first. That was like, recon attacking a recon. I almost had a stroke. And a heart attack simultaneously. So don't do that. So the tank attacks first. Okay. Killed off the recon. So I'd say Toulouse has the early lead. Got two kills right off the bat. Securing these top properties over here. Not putting any pressure at the bottom though. Seems like Average Joe is going for the bottom area pushing towards the middle, like this crescent, where it's loose going for this top crescent. I think that's the natural, natural progression of the game, uh, due, due to how the bases uh, reinforce one another. Soon the airport might come into play and help the other side push back a bit, but we'll see for now. Got a nice infantry wall going over, on over here. There is a tank over here that could attack that tank, but, uh, you know, there's another tank back up, then there's another tank after that. Another artillery. Okay, so we're getting, ar getting already heavy over here. Already hot and heavy. So now we got Mr. Joe getting the copter. Okay, I don't disagree with that at all. And attacking that nice little infantry with the tank instead of opting for that free hit on that tank over there because he wants to bring in that artillery. Bringing in an anti-air, I like that. Going with the copter and the anti-air. Simultaneously putting some air pressure while also anticipating some air, press air pressure from the opponent. I like that. Turn nine, beautiful sweet spot. Turn eight, nine, 10, I like getting anti-air. Doesn't really matter on the map, to be perfectly honest. Doesn't really matter if I'm playing Drake, to be perfectly honest. I'm going for that anti-air and that sweet spot right there. And let's see what Mr. Toulouse has to say about that. Gets the vision with the, uh, the uh, infantry over here. Spots the artillery. That's why you don't need a recon. Like, it already did the job. It saw the artillery. Now it's like, all right, I'm not going to attack that tank over there. Maybe I'll attack this tank over here, perhaps, but it's from a road. Uh, we'll see what Mr. Toulouse does about that. Nope, just content. Shifting them towards the bottom can attack this property at a moment's notice if need be kind of gatekeeping You can put like attack the tank over here kill that infantry and then put the infantry over there blocking the way on the road Kind of playing like a little uh, a, a bridge troll. You got to play pay the troll toll to get across the bridge over there uh, 
So let's see. Yeah, also had Terra. You know, great line sync alike. 8, 9, 10. Turn 10. There you go. Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea to get some nice anti-air. Also gets the copter. Man, these guys are mirroring each other for the most part. Only difference was the recon and then the extra artillery by Toulouse. So we got a close match. We got some some great minds thinking alike. Uh, let's see where they start to differentiate from each other and see where we get some sharp play. We have identical incomes too, I just noticed. 1900, 1900. And by 1900, I mean 19,000. Pretty good in, uh, like I said, kind of a mirror match so far. Going for a medium tank and a recon. I kind of like that. Medium tank doing the, you know, the powin, the recon providing the vision. Although, like I said, I don't know, recons, you want to have them on the side, so I would have put the medium tank there, maybe the recon on the side over there, provide vision down here. Medium tank goes in the center, starts bashing things. That's just me, though. Minor nitpick. We'll see if it comes into play, whether that matters or not. Getting dangerously close to overextending. Toulouse understands this map way better than I did the first time. Toulouse is already like, yo. I'm going to let him overextend and I'm going to punish him. He tries to go for that property over there, he's going to get blasted. Also, this artillery can go over here, plop it on the comm tower, prevent any capping of this property. So I like... Toulouse just has a natural knack of understanding maps, it seems. Yeah, has the tank over here on call, ready to attack, but doesn't realize that Average Joe has a tank in waiting. Although, I guess you can take that off of getting a nice tank engagement there, but it would interrupt the cap. Sees that... I guess the saw that the artillery moved in the fog due to vision from the mountains, etc. Knows that it's no longer over there, now attacking this tank over there since it's a free hit. Also bringing in the artillery's backup so no other tank wants to come in and take that fight. See, slowly shifting the fight down to the bottom. Not going for the throat over here, going to the bottom. So they're already making a lot of sense. I guess it just comes intuitive to some, some people, higher level players. Not going for medium tank, going for a more... Mm, smaller build, more agile, quick, less bulky units like uh, Average Joe. Let's see if that comes into play. Another thing about these big bulky units, they're going to draw on some Rachel covering fire when she uses her superpower. So they also have dual uses in this in this instance. Now Average Joe, still going up towards the top over here a little bit, uh, but seems like most of the battle is on Toulouse's side near the bottom, which is exactly where he wants it. Although, gives up a nice free hit to that artillery over there, so Needed some more backup up here. I guess that tank can come in, but you can shift this artillery up here and also provide, you know, backup for this tank over there. If I'm our average Joe, before I even know what he does, I would shift all my army up here and just start consolidating in this area over here. It's a lost fight over here. You're going to want to go up here and then start pushing this side while Toulouse pushes down here towards the bottom and continue your mirror matchup. Does exactly that. Joker, okay, great minds. Yep, moving up to the top, exactly as I would advise. These are high level players. They know what they're doing. Um, where is the first... Okay, the other battlecopter's in the middle. And Toulouse's anti-air is up here, anticipating the airport would attack over there. So I think that Average Joe has that in mind and wants to shift down to the bottom or, where Toulouse would not be expecting the copter attack, which I also like a lot. So Toulouse comes down, attacks with the recon. So the recon actually slid all the way down over here, got a nice four hit. I mean, it's dead next turn, but, you know, there's a good amount of damage to that. A poor little... Artillery, but now a tank's coming in to get a nice hit off this missile silo onto it onto a planes tank Ouchie Healing that oh this might be a nice. Oh, no, it's not full HP. That would have been even more beautiful Got a full HP a tank uh, hit after that bringing up this copter up here to the middle. I would assume just mirroring uh, Average does play yep you, you don't want to keep it on the airport side because your opponent will easily anticipate that once you get to the higher levels you want to sh front shift your airport and your air units to the other side not front shift your airport front shift your air units away from your airport so your opponent is caught off guard now let's see what average Joe has in store for mr. Toulouse so mr. Show goes for the bottom over here gets a kill on them I would have done the vision Eh, whatever I don't think it matters he put us he, he might have seen him go for the cap right here. I probably would have killed that and then go for the cap. Minor nitpick. Copter comes in, gets a nice hit off on the tank. But see, Antair is waiting right there, literally. Mr. Joe gets off a hit there. Going for the surround on the recon. Barely gets the kill. Got a little lucky with the luck there. Wants to probably get the tank there to position, but I think sees that... This copter is essentially 100% dead due to the, uh... Actually, I don't know if he has any vision on the, uh... Copter being dead yet. Attacking a ghost over here. 
obviously an infantry. And, uh, yeah, it seemed like pretty standard, except for the rockets. My goodness, what are those rockets doing over there? I guess put them over here and then have range on the city. Maybe even put them up here. I don't know. I don't like rockets, man, in fog. It's just, I'm not a rockets person in fog. That's just how it is. You know, if it's standard, I'm team rocket, you know, Pokemon, whatever. But if it's fog, I'm not doing that. So, goes for the uh, copter kill. Copter comes in, gets a nice hit on the artillery. Now there's a lot of damages to be done. And then, to lose pops, the unheard of Rachel Power. When I made my YouTube video about like, oh, but the COs and when to use their powers and stuff and the CO category stuff I made, they're like, yeah, who ever uses Rachel CO power? You only ever use your super CO power, even in fog. And I was like, yeah, okay, well, some top level players like Go7 and apparently Toulouse use it, so you need to shut your little mouth person so let's see what Toulouse does with this gives you an extra what a lot of luck 50% 40% I think it's 40% I don't even think that's great 40% extra luck but let's see how it does great engagement so far that's like equivalent to probably like a 30% 40% power power blue so that did a pretty good job right there also another great engagement from the luck okay well that infantry stood no chance but then the copter comes in for a follow-up eh. Average, nothing special there. Really good engagement there, an 8 HP infantry doing 7 damage. Let's see how this infantry does against the recon. Another great, you know, having pretty good luck so far, I won't, won't lie about that. Bam! Another really good hit. But also, Toulouse needs to be aware that this average Joe guy over here, he's gonna have a scop. So he needs to make sure that all his units are not in missile range. Maybe put this medium tank next to a bunch of infantry. Okay, he's so already got the infantry ball going over here. Also needs a unit magnet ball for the amount of funds, not just the infantry. There's the amount of units. One missile goes to that. The amount of infantry, which is another missile, and then the amount of funds. So you want to make sure that you have the amount of funds thing down pat or else this thing's going to get blasted. Okay. So that was an interesting luck thing. I mean, did pretty good damage. I'm not going to lie. I've had really lucky luck rolls. Uh... But is it worth it? We'll find out. Now, Average Joe's like, I'm just using the straight up old covering fires. Brought this medium tank up here to take the hit. It will revive all of its HP in one turn due to Rachel's day to day power, which heals your units instead of 2 HP, 3 HP. So, went on cities and properties, etc. So, I guess it drew the missile fire away from these three tanks over here. So, kind of a smart move over there. I like that. This tank unknowingly getting into that sweet, sweet artillery fire. Doesn't have vision yet. Still doesn't have vision. Oh goodness. Yeah, that uh, that artillery is under the radar. N Mr. Joe has no idea about that uh, little artillery. It's not even in a forest. It's on the freaking road, for God's sake. Doesn't even know about it. It's about to get a nice shot off on that uh, medium tank. Mr. Joe's like, whatever, man. I'm just bringing my rockets forward. Build another copter. Build another anti-air because the other one over here is probably going to die maybe, I don't know. Or no, it's because he saw the copter down here. Decided to make another anti-air rather than bring this one all the way down there through the middle of the fight. So that was a pretty devastating uh, superpower. I mean, it did quite a decent chunk. Mr. Toulouse over here does have the income advantage uh, due to denying this property for Mr. Joe. So he's, he's using the go technique of blocking the bottom, but also simultaneously fighting in the middle. So it's kind of crazy. Everything's really sharp right here. Technique kind of goes out the window. It's just like, yeah, whatever. You got to do what you got to do. These infantry took a lot of hits. They took two of the three missiles, thankfully, because the unit count ball and the infantry count ball. And then, okay, kills that unit right there. Gets the nice hit off on that medium tank from the artillery. I'm assuming this tank comes here and hits that uh, artillery. I mean, anti-air. Oh, my God. I need to stop saying that. And then, oh, man. this He's got a lot of follow-up. Hits that. Oh, goodness. Build the T-Copter, because T-Copters are cool. If you're a cool person, you build T-Copters. Um, they don't teach that you that in school, but that's how it is. Builds another anti-air, because this one's going to die. Knowingly, do this. See, you don't want to overextend. Like I said earlier, you plop an artillery there, it's going to get hammered. Also, if, if you're feeling feisty, maybe even a rockets. So, Toulouse needs to be careful not to overextend again. Not not overextend it. Never overextend it. Needs to be careful not to overextend and lose the lead. Because Toulouse does have a lead right now. 30,000. Has the income lead. 
had a pretty nice power. Looks like another power is coming up soon if, if he so chooses to use it. But Mr. Joe's not going down without a fight. Starts to consolidate near the top, bringing in the big beefy units in the rockets. Starts to form this nice, really strong ball of units. Yeah, all in the middle. However, the strong ball of units against a Rachel player, that is a little questionable. That's one thing Rachel does good. But Toulouse is not aware of that because of the fog, so he might ch choose to pop the power for all we know. Tank comes in. Not overextending. See, Toulouse is very patient. Not going in up here. You know, just going in. Getting on the very edge of overextending, but not quite touching it. Going towards the bottom over here. Listens to Sensei go. Maybe go give him some advice before the game. I don't know. You never know what goes on beyond uh, enemy lines. So Mr. Joe over here. He's like, screw it. I'm going for the attack up here. I see these stranded tanks over here. I got a medium tank. I got artillery. I got rockets. Oh, doesn't go for the attack over here. Sees the big medium tank over here. Doesn't want to take an engagement over there. I kind of would have taken it and then moved my rockets up. But I guess a little bit afraid of triggering an extra amount of funds for Toulouse's power meter. And then would pop the Super CO power. Maybe that's what was going on. Rockets is content here. Um... And the artillery moves up. I would have moved the rockets there. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I wanted to use the, the weakened recon there. It's kind of strange. Kind of the sitting duck for a superpower if that does come off. Toulouse is now going full down to the bottom like you should be doing. Not worrying about the middle. Just like, whatever. I'm going down to the bottom. Get it, you know, kill a copter when you want to. Medium tank's like, eh, I've had enough. All the units are down here. I'm not going to go strand myself at the top and get massacred by a swarm of army. So Toulouse is going all north towards the bottom over here. Mr. Joe is still bunched up in a little ball. Getting vision with the infantry. So you don't really need, like I said, like for the 12th time, you don't really need recons that much in this map. Uh, just for the bottom area. Uh, just in the top areas because, like, you get so much good vision. So starts pushing to the top. So now Mr. Joe's like, all right, I need to take these three properties. Seems like Toulouse is going to get these three properties over here. I need to equalize. I cannot allow Mr. Toulouse, who already has a 4k income lead, to push that even further. So there, there's a fire lit under Mr. Average Joe's ass, and he needs to move starting now. So that was a pretty decent turn by Average Joe clawing back into it, but Toulouse is dangerously close to a Super CEO power. Probably will reach it barring a few engagements. Oh my goodness. And uh, yeah, that is going to hurt if that Super CEO happens. That is going to hurt a lot. Average Joe would be sweating if this game was live. Sweating. Oh my goodness. Just a thousand away, basically. It looks like... As Toulouse sees this medium tank over here and sees the recon. Doesn't know about this huge amorphous mass of stuff over there. Uh, so, looks like we'll not get the super sour... Oop. I take that back. Now sees two medium tanks here. And is like, okay, I need to get this power then. Only needs, what, 450 sacks the entire. Smartly. Very smart awareness right there to get that superpower off. That's two missiles there. One for, th actually, no, the infantry, or, I don't know where it struck for the infantry ball. But at least two missiles hit there for the amount of units and for the value of units. Devastating. Can't quite see it in fog because it hasn't shown yet since it's not Mr. Joe's turn. But he had, what, 100... 3k at the beginning of the turn let's see how much that did oh my god it more than half his army and just like that average joe gave up i think average joe was like man toulouse he's weird he used the rachel co power before he's not gonna use the i mean not that he used the normal power before now he's not gonna use the super co power right wrong toulouse knows when to use the normal and when to use the super i'm assuming didn't have vision over there, probably had, would have had a recon or whatever go in the front lines next turn and see, oh, how many units are around here? If there's not that many units, just hold off, maybe use the super, uh, the normal power later. But saw that there's two medium tanks within, right next to each other basically, and just ultimately went for that super CO power, crushing the opponent. See, if this was an Andy over here, man, crush the dirt off your shoulders or whatever, and you're back in the game and you're gonna uh, absolutely annihilate the Rachel player. But if it's Rachel versus Rachel, it's a whole different story. Rachel versus any other CEO, rather. So, and Toulouse did a g very good example. I talked about it before the start of the game. I honestly didn't even know Toulouse followed all these things. I kind of just glimpsed through it when I first saw this game. 
literally followed Go's advice like word for word. Like was clearly going to take over this bottom over here, then probably would shift up here towards the top. Just you know, had a skeleton crew, had like a tank and an anti over here, just guarding these, but main force down here. Had a bomber waiting too, saw the two medium tanks, didn't even need it in the end. But basically played how this map should be played. And Average Joe put up a good fight. They were mirrored for the first, like, say, 13 turns out of 17. Maybe, you know, one or two different slight changes. But then it came down to using the CO power, which actually had a lot of damage done over here. And then overextension was the downfall of Average Joe. Went a little too far over here, got pushed back. And then when he tried to draw Toulouse down in here, it's like, all right, I'm going to back off. Hopefully he'll overextend. Toulouse like, no, nah, I'm good. Just went down to dominate the bottom over here where average joe is caught off guard sometimes it seems like you can't retreat and you can't attack because toulouse split it so well you can't attack here because toulouse would massacre his units and he, he also can't retreat because then you just shift down over here so it seemed like a lose lose if you know what you're doing so that is how you put the grind on and struggle grinding and that's how you make the opponent struggle well done by toulouse well done for average joe for the first you know, a good amount of turns, but that's when the uh, the hammer came down. No HQ cap for once. So I, I know some of you HQ cap lovers uh, were a little disappointed in the result. This breaks the HQ cap streak of like a lot of, I think four games. I've done four replay. No, the great one. But before that, I had like a four game streak of HQ caps. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed yourself. I hope you learned a lot about this map. I wanted this one to be a little more instructional than crazy there's no hq capture setup but i want you to learn about the maps so this is more an instructional one as to a more entertaining one so i hope you enjoyed yourselves and i hope to see you next time on a nice advanced force replay bye now